The former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has died after being shot while giving a speech at a campaign event. Now, eyewitnesses say that Mr Abe was shot twice from behind while giving a speech in the street. The country's current Prime Minister has condemned the shooting, calling it an act of brutality. And world leaders have also come out in the last uh, couple of hours expressing their shock as well. Now, a man was detained after the shooting. It happened in the city of Nara in western uh, Japan, where Shinzo Abe was giving his support to a candidate uh, there. Uh, let's uh, get more on this now and go straight to our correspondent, Marika Oi, who's uh, in Singapore. Um, Marika, incredibly shocking, not just because violence is so rare in Japan, it has been for such a long time, it's very difficult to get hold of a gun, but also Shinzo Abe, we must remind all of our viewers, wherever they are in the world, that he remains a very powerful man in Japan. He was a hugely influential figure, wasn't he? Indeed, he comes from a political family and he has been, uh, he was uh, Japan's longest serving prime minister, uh, only uh, stepped down in 2020. Uh, but as you said, he still has huge influence over the current administration. So, for example, when Russia invaded Ukraine, Mr. Abe came out and said that Japan needed to increase military spending. And then shortly after, you start hearing from the current prime minister, Fumio Kishida, echoing the sentiment. Uh, so you you can see how still very influential he is uh, and it came as a huge shock when we first heard the news that he was shot at around 11 30 a.m local time this morning in japan as you said in the city of nara of course japan has an upper house election coming up this Sunday, and that's why he was out on the streets, uh, you know, giving a speech, uh, supporting one of the candidates in the city. Uh, apparently, that visit was only confirmed late last night. So how the su suspect managed to find out about it and prepared his attack, that remains to be seen. But as you say, a, a, a suspect, a 41-year-old man who lives in the city of Nara has been in police custody. He's been quoted by a, a couple of local media reports saying that he had disagreements with Mr. Abe's policies and decided to attack him. But this kind of violence is extremely rare. So as you can imagine, it comes as a huge shock to everyone in Japan. And it has just been confirmed by an official, by the ruling uh, Liberal Democratic Party, that he has passed away. Yeah. And uh, it's also shocking because political violence is incredibly rare in Japan as well. Um, but I've just noticed that, that world leaders around the world very quick uh, to, to come out and express their shock as well. He's, he wasn't just a popular leader in Japan, he was a popular leader on the international stage. Yes, I mean, you know, a couple of decades ago, Japan was known for a revolving door of prime ministers. Then Shinzo Abe, for the second time that he became a prime minister, he served for many years. And as a result, he became kind of the face of uh, Japanese politics, uh, became very uh, close friends with, for example, Vladimir Putin. He had very close ties with him. And since Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Mr. Abe has come under a, a bit of criticism about that. He's also known uh, for his very nationalistic views. So he had very very frosty relationships with Japan's neighbors like China and South Korea when he was the prime minister. Uh, so he was a divisive figure. Uh, while his uh, economic policy has been cheered by a lot of investors, uh, his uh, foreign policy has been quite controversial. And as a result, some of the relationships that Japan has with its neighbors uh, were somewhat strained as well. Yeah, our colleagues at uh, BBC Monitoring, that uh, they've noticed that in China, leaders there have expressed their shock and they're paying tribute to, to Shinzo Abe, but uh, online they're noticing that a lot of Chinese nationalists are celebrating his death, uh, showing just how divisive he was uh, there, and that he didn't have friends uh, uh, everywhere. How do you think he would like to be remembered? You've been reporting on his career for some time now. Well, he was a politician who pushed for that constitution. Of course, Japan has that pacifist con constitution since the end of the Second World War. He wanted that to be changed, and he's been pushing for that uh, since he was in office. And 
even after he stepped down, he has been quite vocal about Japan's military spending, how Japan needs to cooperate more and you know work with its allies when it comes to, for example, Russia's invasion of Ukraine. And of course, uh, the current government of Fumio Kishida has been quite proactive in working together with the United States and some of its other Western allies to put pressure on Russia, which didn't happen uh, in 2014. So as I said, you know, he, he was a very influential figure. And uh, even though he might not have been the most popular politicians in Japan, especially uh, among those on the left, uh, it, this attack comes as a huge shock. And we're now seeing a lot of uh, pictures of him as a, as a young child, because, of course, his grandfather was a prime minister. Uh, his father was a senior politician in the Liberal Democratic Party as well. Uh, so a lot of uh, very old footage of him, uh, I guess, you know, climbing up the political ladder, if you like, of Japanese politics has been played many times on local media as people remember his legacy.